I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Today, I wanna to show you how you can make this mandala art inside of Inkscape. It's using a new method. Previously, we did line art versions, and I was getting questions like this from Robbie. So very cool, I just started using Inkscape. Could you possibly make a vid to explain how I can color my mandala so I can make wall hangings and correspond with my cushions? Yes, definitely. It was funny because we're always all learning Inkscape, no matter what level you're at, and the solution to actually make a colored in mandala was so simple I had to make the video about it. So let's get started with it. We're gonna keep things simple. To start, I brought in a color palette here. The color codes will be in the description below. This is the page. Go to File, Document Properties, and you'll see the menu here. We wanna be on Format A4. There's lots of selections. A4 will put us all at the same scale. So if you're gonna follow along, it'll look the same. Next, for Mandala Designs, we wanna to go to Extensions, Render, Guides Creator. This is gonna make hash marks right in the center of the page. It's gonna help with alignment and snapping. On the Guides Creator menu, go to Guides Preset Custom, Columns 2, Rows 2. You can hit Live Preview or just do Apply. There it is. We're gonna use Inkscape to mirror each element of the mandala design and then multiply it with rotate copies. We'll start by going to the Bezier pen over here and we wanna make sure we're exactly on the vertical and horizontal. So you see this thing right here? That is your snapping button. If you click on the triangle, you can see Inkscape gives you all these different options of how you want the snapping to work. These blue lines, these are guidelines. So you wanna make sure you have guidelines selected. Also, other points, make sure object midpoints, object rotation centers are also selected. If you have those, you're good to go. Snapping is on, so I have the Bezier pen tool. Go somewhere on the vertical, click and drag down all the way down to the horizontal. We're making a triangle here. Click again and let it hover. You see how it says handle to guide intersection? It's gonna center it up perfectly for you. And then when you're at the center point, double click that will finish your triangle. From here, we move on to path effects. Go up to path, path effects. You'll see a sidebar menu pop up. Nothing's there. Look down at the plus, hit the plus, and here is our path effects selector. The first one we wanna choose is called mirror symmetry, right here. Click on that. It reflects across the center line because we have it on mode freely defined mirror line. The simple solution that solved the mystery of how to make a filled in colored mandala is to hit Fuse Paths. Nothing happens yet, but it's needed for later. Now go to the plus again. We're gonna add another path effect on top of the first one. This time look for Rotate Copies. There you go. Default method normal, number of copies will do 12. Enter, go to Edit Paths by Node up here. And the diamond node in the center, you can drag that to the center of your guidelines. So far, this is the exact same method we did in the previous videos, but how do you get rid of these stroke lines? At first glance, if you go to Object, Fill and Stroke, you might think, I'll just take the stroke off. I'll go to Stroke, X out of it, and it looks like that worked, but they are still there. Visually, we can now play with this and pull the handle, see that? And once we have this element of the mandala the way we want it, we'll lock it in and make those stroke lines go away forever. And actually, while they're still there, it's easier to, if I double click, I can add another node and that will help you make that outside perimeter. This is where snapping actually gets in the way. Let's toggle snapping off, zoom in a touch, and see how you'd like it to look. I think that looks all right. We're gonna make the whole mandala design with only two main elements. This is the first one. We'll call this one the petals. When you're done using the mirror symmetry rotate copies, go up to path, object to path. And you'll know it worked if you see all the nodes pop up. Also, you can go to path effects and it's gone. To permanently get rid of all the strokes, go back to path, union. Let's move this aside. This is our first element, and let's make a second element, and we'll combine the two to make the overall design. Same thing, starting from scratch, Bezier pen, snapping enabled, hover somewhere on the vertical guide and click, go down to the horizontal guide, click again, let snapping center you up, double click. You've got your triangle. Path effects, add a path effect, mirror. Don't forget to click on fuse paths, add another path effect, rotate copies, Number of copies, we'll do 12 again, enter. Edit paths by node, drag that to the center, and you can make your changes. This one I want to be kind of rounded like this. Let's bring back the strokes so you can see what's happening better. This one we'll call the arch element. I wanna lock it in, so I go to 
path, object to path. I see all my nodes pop up. Now I can go to path again, union. There they go. <laughs> Let's take the stroke off of that. And we're set up. We've got our two different elements, but I want to have variety within these two. Let's start with the pedal. Control D will duplicate it. I'll bring in a visual reference. This is what we're making. I want to have the full colored in part, which we just made, but I also want these stripes. The variety gives it depth and makes it a little bit more interesting. So let's make those. I've got this one selected. I'll do Control D. On my Fill and Stroke tab, I'll go to the Fill tab. There's two stacked on top of each other. The top one will change it to a lighter version. And if I hold shift and control, I can grab an outside handle and bring it in. So now we have these two pieces and I'm going to make this part become a ribbon by selecting both parts. Go up to path, difference. There it is. We're going to use this over and over. Let's do the same with that arch version. Okay, believe it or not, that is all we need. These four components, aside from the center piece, we'll do at the very end, are going to build all this. You can get way more complex than this, have three, four, five different elements. I'm gonna keep it very simple. We'll start, control D to duplicate this, snapping back on, center that up. Let's bring in a ribbon now, control D. We'll vary the color to this lighter version. You see this magnifying glass with the rectangle, zoom to fit page, brings it right into the page. It's gonna snap into the center, hold shift and control, I can bring that in slightly. Since we're going to be turning snapping on and off quite a bit, if I hover over it, it gives you the shortcut, the percentage symbol. I want this to go closer, so I'll hit percentage. Now I have snapping off. Okay, we've got dark to our ribbon. I'll click back on the filled in petals. Control D, duplicate that one, and we'll bring it in. You don't have to do the double path effects. If you want to add something like a circle right here, let's make that white. There's no mirroring needed. I'll go to path effects, hit the plus, and we'll just do the rotate copies on that one. I need 12 of them. Enter, edit paths by node, bring that to the center. Before I move on though, I have to lock that in. So path, object to path. Now it's independent of the path effects. Sometimes path effects sticks. So make sure you take the step path, object to path when you finish using a path effect. Next layer, we'll do another solid, control D. Let's make this one light. Is there transparency on that? That should be opaque. That's better. First, I'll center it up. When you have a symmetrical item like this, if I hit it once and I get my turn handles, by holding control, that will lock in. It's gonna lock in a set increment. I want it to be right in between the other two. Now I can select it again and shift and control, bring that in. I'm gonna have to move my circles, no problem. Take snapping off, bring them up right there. I could bring in another ribbon to do the stripe, or you can just cheat. Control D, duplicate it. Choose the color that you want. Bring it in a touch. Control D, that one, back to the original, and bring that one in a touch. I just cheated because I know the direction I'm going. I'm trying to make this exact thing I made earlier. But when you're physically having fun just playing around, you might want to have these cutouts because then you can try all sorts of things. So the content is redundant. Fast forward into complete project. And through the magic of editing, we sped up through the layers. I want to finish off the center all together here. Let's add spokes in the wheel here. I'll just go with a rectangle. Path effects, rotate copies. How many do we want of that? Let's do double the 12th. We'll do 24. That's pretty good. And the finishing touch, we'll make a flower. This might be a rough flower. Let's go to path effects, rotate copies. I only need five. It could be worse. All right, let's zoom out and see what we made here. Get rid of these guides. That is our filled in mandala. You can kind of get lost in just the rhythm of making the different layers. It's nice. All right, thanks and see you next time.